Hello and welcome to our next video. Today, our guest is Martin Schneider, CEO from Streamergy. In the last 20 years, Martin has been the CEO from Meteo Control and now his new challenge or startup, Streamergy, is working. Welcome, Martin. Yeah. Hello, Theresa. Thanks for having me here. So, I thought I um, can explain you a little bit um, from our journey. Um, from the way to uh, start a, a new startup. And then um, I would also explain you in more detail about the business model itself. So what we what we are planning to do or what we are doing already. Great, okay. sounds very interesting to me. So what were the biggest hurdles um, on the way to the foundation? Well, um, we started um, not as a complete standard um, in the startup team, yeah, we were already from the very beginning a team of 10 people. Uh, and so it becomes uh, clear financing is the biggest issue. Uh, otherwise, um, as a startup won't live very long. So, of course, we had some connections and our first contact was an international investor. Mm -hmm. And um, well, um, we thought this is a perfect uh, chance for us. It sounds really great yeah so we were sitting together discussing the ideas discussing how to do it and yeah after a while it became clear uh, um, we want to do this together and we were um, all motivated to start yeah he um, was here for some weeks he went back um, and after two three weeks he announced us that he uh, got corona and um, well um, quite heavily so <clears throat> this was difficult for us because we were more or less in between we didn't know is he coming back is he still gonna finance it or um, is he uh, not any any more interested after this or whatever and so we, we uh, decided to use the time to create business plans and uh, to do calculations and so on which was also very helpful for us but after three months he came back and said okay I still want to do it and um, yeah then of course we were um, again uh, motivated and uh, so the next step uh, we did was looking for a consultant and um, well this was um, uh, I would say the beginning of the end of this because mm. the consultant made it more and more complex and um, after again two months it was so complex it was um, a huge contract and in the end, we, ha we had to decide, okay, we need another kind of financing. And so the takeaways uh, from this experience is um, a pandemic is not really helpful in this process. <laughs> <laughs> it's clear. <laughs> An international investment is also um, something where you need to be careful. Mm -hmm. with, um, and the most important thing is uh, be careful with uh, consultants, especially if they come from really large entities. Uh, so they make, they make it more complex than it should be. So they killed the deal in the end, but okay, we had to uh, find something else. And our next step was now to um, look for a partner here in Germany. And well, um, we got in contact with a strategic investor. And his idea was to combine uh, the financing of our startup uh, together with, an, with a project, um, yeah, with, with an order mm -hmm. yeah, to us. And um, yeah, in the beginning we thought, okay, that's a good idea. Why not? We have already an uh, order on hand and uh, we start to work on this. But to um, bring this down on a paper, on a, on a contract is quite complicated and um, well, Again, the contract was growing, also the cost of the lawyers were growing and after two months, yeah, uh, we were really close to go to the notary and uh, we thought, okay, now that's it, even uh, it was not everything perfect, but we had also some time pressure as yeah, the team was there, yeah, they, they wanted to start or they were um, actually starting. Uh, and at that time, the partner also to come up with really demanding um, <coughs> new questions and um, yeah, uh, new challenges for us and at that time it became clear okay this is not really a partnership we want to have forever uh, and so um, also this crashed more or less uh, and uh, the takeaways for or out of this experience 
is yeah, be careful um, with the combination of um, yeah, well, startup financing and an order. Yeah, this is not really standard and uh, becomes difficult. The other takeaway is you cannot be sure unless really the contract is ready. Yeah, it really can explode in the last minute. This happened to us. Yeah, and um, I think the third outcome is don't work together with um, with people who yeah use the time pressure you have for again additional requirements. Mm -hmm. uh, we thought this is just not a fair deal. Yeah, and then our uh, third attempt, uh, and now also the final. Um, was now with um, yeah, a, a person who uh, knew us already from before, though he had um, um, a personal relationship with us and uh, he trusted in us. And um, yeah, I think this was the basis for, for uh, this financing. And finally, we, we had already uh, um, yeah, many contract documents and we thought, Okay, we just use those, uh, adapt it a little bit, and then we can start uh, in uh, two, three weeks. Uh, but it took again two months. Yeah? Even everything worked straightforward. But the good thing is, yeah, it, it took place, uh, it happened. Mm -hmm. But the takeaway is, even everything is clear, everything is um, uh, straightforward. Uh, uh, the whole process takes just two months, uh, and you have to have this time, otherwise. Uh, it's not working and the other outcome is yeah, we made the best the best experience with a person who uh, had a personal re re relationship and trust in us. Mm -hmm. So financing was the biggest thing for us, the biggest hurdle. <laughs> wow, I see. Thanks for sharing this experience with us. Um, was there support from any institution or others? So? Yeah. So during uh, this time in the beginning where we didn't know if the first invest investor um, wants to work with us, we said, okay, uh, let's uh, do application also with those institutions um, which are available here in, in Germany, so the high-tech Gründerfonds, Bayern Capital, and uh, of course you need an, um, a business plan or a, a pitch uh, for those. And, um, yeah, then you have to write this application, which is a good exercise yeah, for, for any startup. Yeah, you should do this. But on the other hand, we were also quite disappointed in the end because we realized you have to fit into a very narrow uh, schematic. And if you don't fit into this, uh, it's mm -hmm. almost not possible. And this frame yeah, they are looking for is that, uh, well, you, you, have to, you have to have already a kind of um, yeah, either bootstrap financing or financing through business angels and you have to have some first clients. And the most important thing is you have to have a business plan with, which is more or less really uh, exploding or ambitious and uh, promising. And well, our business plan was just well, more realistic, more conservative, because we know the market and we know how it, how it goes like. And so this didn't fit together. So in the end, we were quite uh, disappointed from the institutions you find here and from the support for a startup. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. Um, which tools will help for, for during the process? Business plan or the idea to um, really to bring down uh, two figures was a, a challenge for us. And uh, we wanted to do a five year planning and mm -hmm. we also wanted to have it international, so German and English. Therefore, it's not so easy to find uh, something. And uh, we were really searching for a long time. And finally, we found a really good tool. It's from Fimovi. Mm -hmm. It's an um, Excel-based financing planner. Yeah, this is really uh, something I can recommend for the figures to write a business plan yeah, in uh, normal texts uh, uh, you want to work together in a team and therefore it's good if it's based on an internet platform and we used the tool from Unterwerkstatt uh, um, which is an Sharia tool and uh, the good thing is the complete structure is already predefined and you just fill in all the questions and then uh, the business plan is yeah, I would say quite professional and yeah you really need those documents for the banks and of course also for the uh, financing and the investors. Mm -hmm. So these tools are important, I mm -hmm. would say. So the right tools can support the creative work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, how did you evaluate the business model then? Right, yeah. The, uh, the business model is, of course, uh, the key for the success. And um, we worked on this quite a long time. Uh, we, we started already half a year uh, before and then we discussed the ideas with uh, people in the industry and after a while it became clear, okay, the idea is great, but still not, not the best one and we started from scratch again. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course you have some parameters you have to regard, so our team is mostly based on, on programmers, IT uh, people, and so we of course ha have to find a business model uh, based on data, data analytics on software, uh, software-based model. On the other hand, of course, we are in the renewable industry and we are very experienced in the monitoring and analytics of PV systems. So it had something to do with this, but, but it was a long process. And I would say the key is really to reflect this with other people and to get their feedback and to discuss it uh, back and forward, because in the end you will figure out, okay, it's, it is still something you will have to adjust uh, from mm -hmm. time to time. Yes. Okay, and how are you doing now after one year already? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This happened to us. We had to adjust our business plan. Mm -hmm. uh, we thought we know the market, we know the people, and we know really the industry and what we are doing. But if you forget, just one minor thing, yeah, everything turns out to be different. Mm -hmm. And in our case, it was just a decision process. Yeah, it, it takes really a long time uh, for clients to decide for our food, to decide for our service. And yeah, this made it necessary for us to uh, think about how can we add things to our ideas, how we can change it. And so I would say we are not exactly there where we wanted to be. Mm -hmm. yeah, we are somewhere in between, but on the way uh, to the business. <laughs> so it's like a journey. <laughs> it's still a journey. <laughs> yes. Okay. So I only have one more question. Would you like to show us your business model? Yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, I would use uh, the presentation and um, show you some slides so it becomes a bit, little bit more graphical, more easy to understand. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> our logo and the first screen shows already the idea. It's about connecting things, the network of data, streaming data, and um, it's all about uh, energy, energy from the renewable market or uh, um, in the surrounding of the renewables. As a um, team, management team and the founders of uh, Streamergy. There is uh, Stefan Rensberg, um, myself and Daniel. So um, the three of us, we um, <coughs> founded Streamergy and uh, the basic idea of the uh, business model is that um, the operator of a renewable energy system has in general no control of his data because the data are uh, measured and uh, then uh, sent to a software application which is normally centralized and hosted by a monitoring provider. And um, with this fact, um, yeah, he has really less flexibility to work um, with the data and to create uh, individual solutions. And um, yeah, at the same time, he has also a high risk because he is fully dependent um, what happened to his data and what the monitoring provider is doing with it. So um, uh, <coughs> this is uh, the situation on the one hand. On the other hand, of course, there are lots of different software solutions on the market. And uh, to use those, uh, it's also important uh, to be flexible um, with the data to feed uh, data into, into the different tools. So this is a general situation. So our solution and our approach is to give back the data sovereignty to the owner of the data, to connect the applications and to provide the individual solutions for him. <clears throat> so the whole idea is about a turntable of data. So we connect on the, on the one hand uh, the de decentralized energy production systems like wind turbines, like PV systems or also uh, battery solutions. And um, 
<coughs> connect them on the other hand with applications and provide also individual developments on top of this. So our offer is on the one hand this data lake, the connection of data, also to digitalize uh, and optimize the process of clients and to provide also white label developments and white label services. Yeah, and yeah, uh, to give you a better idea what it um, means in detail, I would like to show you some examples. Um, so here is a dashboard based on a standard tool. Yeah, it's uh, Grafana, uh, quite known in the market. And uh, it's really easy and simple to create charts based on this tool. And uh, if you do have the full access, uh, to your database. Uh, you can use those standard applications and um, uh, come up really quickly with nice, da nice dashboards and individual uh, charts. Also, um, in terms of the analysis, there are um, all kinds of an analytic tools from uh, business analytics, Power BI, um, down to Excel tools. But uh, the key is again, uh, you have to have the full access uh, to all your informations, to all the data, datas, to um, um, yeah, get the advantages out of these tools. Um, a business <coughs> analysis tool I mentioned already uh, is uh, provided by Microsoft and um, it's, it's a really powerful tool, but um, it's also living on uh, the data and the data stream you can provide and uh, you can only use those tools in, in a good way if you have the access to your data. And um, uh, also an important part is of course uh, to have the um, direct access to the systems, to the um, live systems, um, to the production system and therefore very often a VPN uh, connection is important and therefore yeah, live uh, streaming yeah, is then um, <coughs> possible and, and of course with live data additional um, yeah, advantages are possible and um, can be achieved. So these are um, <coughs> some standards. Also, um, and here the last example is a standard application more for developers. So Node-RED is a, a tool which is <coughs> designed to um, also to uh, do on a low code basis um, in the end nice applications and nice user interfaces and programmers uh, can um, come up really quickly with nice solutions but again therefore it's important to have the full access to the data so uh, <coughs> this is really a key and I hope the examples made it a little bit more clear um, what the idea is about and um, yeah um, it's a, it's a wide range of uh, different different possibilities and yeah uh, Streamergy is um, on the other hand, the partner for this um, yeah, data turntable for the uh, basic structure and also for the individual solutions. Thank you so much, Martin, for these insights. It was great to have you here. Yeah, thanks um, for listening. And um, <clears throat> I hope I could explain a little bit um, from our journey and um, the business idea. And, yeah, um, give some expressions how it is um, to uh, come up with a new startup. <laughs> Great. So? Yeah, thank you.